tumbled early Friday after disappointing guidance and it pointed to a resumption of fierce competition on pricing with Uber. They got a lot of downgrades on the stock. And so the need to reduce prices to match those of Uber, which removed the fuel surcharge in January, is one of the main reasons behind Lyft's expectation that revenue was gonna fall. So Lyft's stock was down 32% in the pre-market trading on Friday. Uber shares were down 3.4%. So the whole overall market was down on Friday. However, Lyft got down and traded sideways down 32% pretty much all of Friday. So Lyft said an increased driver supply meant the company could not continue to charge higher fares during peak times. In the long term, the lower payments to drivers may be a plus, but in the short term, it's a hit to earnings, right? So an analyst at DA Davidson said the changes mean they lowered the 2023 forecast uh, to 516 million from 516 million down to 207 million. So originally it was going to be 516 million. It got lowered down to 207. So that's pretty much almost cut in half. We are seeing Lyft shares absolutely crater in the after hours. They are down some 20 percent, and this likely has to do with the guidance. But let me give you the top and bottom line numbers first. It's a very small beat on the top line. Revenue coming in at $1.18 billion versus $1.16 expected. We've got an adjusted EPS of 74 cents. Unclear if that's comparable, but it is a bit of a messy quarter when it comes to that guidance as well, which is likely what investors are trying to sort through right now. The revenue forecast falling short of estimates and adjusted EBITDA guidance between 5 and $15 million. Again, unclear if this is comparable to street expectations because it includes a change to insurance renewal timing. I did get a chance to speak to co-founder and president John Zimmer not long ago. He said that the supply side recovered faster than they expected, and that is actually weighing on the P&L as they sort out the dynamics. He said, though, that prices are coming down for consumers. This is a stock, Scott, that is up more than 50 percent year to date, coming from a very, very low base, but clearly a disappointment here, especially after Uber raised the bar just yesterday. And looking at the chart of Lyft, what we see that in 2019, they came out, they traded at around $80. They sold off very aggressively down to around $22. This is on the uh, monthly candles. We see this boom of 2020 because pretty much anything that was associated with tech boomed during the pandemic. And then we've seen it starting to sell off really aggressively month after month after month. So if we look here, these are consecutive months of it just being priced lower and lower. One of the challenges that Lyft is going to have is they're competing with Uber. Uber is not a pure play. Lyft is a pure play ticker, right? So what I mean by pure play is that they only pretty much drive revenue by doing one activity. That can have advantages. That can also have disadvantages if it's working for you, right? One thing about Uber is because they have multiple revenue streams, um, they may not be as dependent upon their driver service. Now, none of the revenue streams for Uber really are that successful. So Uber is kind of like the person that says, I have six revenue streams, but none of them are really making any money. The difference between Uber and a regular person is that Uber has financing where they can continue to lose money and not have to worry about going out of business. Lyft being a pure play where they're just pretty much driving the majority of their revenue from doing their driver service is going to have a lot of challenges. Now, what, in my opinion, could help them is if you go into a recession, they can hypothetically start driving more drivers to their platform because people are going to start looking for more work, right? Because they're going to need jobs because of the recession. The challenge is that if there's a lot of drivers in the area, they can't really charge that. I guess they call it a surcharge based on certain times of the day where char they charge you more just to take the ride because it's supposed to be supposed to be more demand and shortage of drivers. If they have more drivers, they're not going to be able to do that, but they also could get more riders on their platform. What that can do is that if everybody floods Uber and Lyft to drive for them, what they can do now is drive the price of drivers down. Because we have so many people looking to drive for us, we'll pay drivers less. Because one of the biggest challenges in this model, and I've been saying this for years, is either they're going to have to raise fees, which means less people use their platform, or they're going to have to pay the drivers less which means that less drivers want to use their platform because they're not getting paid a lot. And that's what can create the challenge to try to grow this company successfully. So what they and Uber are fighting for is market space. And they felt like once we can get market share and we can dominate the market, then we can start working on uh, creating efficiencies and actually turning this thing profitable. So if you look at their balance sheet, we see that their profit margin is negative by 40%, operating margin is negative by almost 35%, return on assets negative, return on equity negative, um, their free cash flows is positive, but the operating cash flows so the cash flows of operations is negative. What we see is that this is not a really well-managed company. 
However, maybe this model just doesn't work, you know, from a profitable standpoint. Maybe the model just doesn't work. And I've always been very skeptical of these type of services because of how they're going to be constrained, where if we have a lot of people that want to use a service, we can't overcharge them because then they won't use it. They'll go to your competitor. However, if we don't pay our drivers enough, nobody will drive. So to, in my opinion, the service becomes a commodity very quickly. And neither or either of the services between Uber and Lyft have figured out a way to really differentiate themselves in the market to want to justify people paying them more money, right? Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.